Crossroads Media. Dave Dombrowski is the greatest human being to walk Earth. There's going to be just so many damn movies of this man and what he's capable of doing. Just like we speak about Jesus, just like we look at the Bible, we will be talking that way about one Dave Dombrowski and the beautiness that he does on a day-to-day -day basis down at winter meetings. So, we all saw it happen yesterday. You see the big Big news, the alerts pop through your phone that Taiwan Walker is now a Philadelphia Philly four years, $72 million, and it looks like 18 AAV, which is what today's market is for a fourth starter. Is it a little bit? Is it a little long? Maybe just a tiny smidge, but Tyone got something very similar. Once again, we are just in a different era where guys are getting the bag and guys are getting fat paychecks and players are getting signed until they're 40-something years old. Not specifically Walker, but I'm just saying in general here, everyone's like, oh, I can't believe this team is tied to X, Y, and Z for 40 until they're 40 years old. I can't believe this team is tied to X, Y, and Z until they're 40. Everybody is because that's how you have to acquire your talent and that's how you have to acquire your stars. And I'm seeing somebody step into a starting pitching role, a good number four who's got a very high ceiling, a nasty splitter. And the problem is when you go back to last year, and you look at the way that this team was set up. Now, I mentioned the stars and the big paychecks. That's not Taiwan Walker, but he's got a good role and a very good ceiling for what we need him to do. And I bring up that fourth starter last season in the playoffs because when you're fighting for your World Series lives and you're bringing up Noah Syndergaard just throughout the postseason, that was one of your best options outside of Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler, and Ranger Suarez. But you asked him to please get through the starting rotation. Uh, the order one time. Please get through their starting lineup one time, please. And then maybe, just maybe, we can ask for one more inning and hope he doesn't give away the lead. Now you actually have a real option. It does come with some concerns. Specifically, his first half is way better than his second halves. And if you look through his track record, in 2020, he had the shortened season, just like everybody else, but he had Tommy John surgery, so he was was battling through that a little bit above 50 innings. I thought it was important for him to throw that, but it's hard to really judge considering it's not a full season of work and through 50-something innings or so, it doesn't tell the full story compared to what he did the last two seasons, which is eight innings. 159 59 innings pitched and 157 and a third innings pitched. That's extremely important. When you think about the battle and the grind of the regular season, extremely important, especially knowing Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola are fatigued. At the back end of the season, they were beat. Think about how many days Zach Wheeler needed off before we could get some version of Zach Wheeler that could help them win. So it means a ton. You go to that 2021 season, though. First half, a 2.66 ERA, and the second half, a 7.13 ERA. He did have a right knee procedure on January 14th after the season completed. So maybe there was a correlation with some sort of knee injury and why it was so different in the second half. And then you look at 2022, his most recent season with the Nets. In the first half, he had a 255 ERA. In the second half, a 480. Now, 480 is completely different from a 713. So while it's still definitely different in the second half, it's nowhere even as pitiful as it was in 2021. And with this offensive lineup and with the ability that these guys can rake big time, you can win some baseball games with your fourth starter maybe giving you a 4-8 ERA at times in the second half to a degree. Uh, I'm not saying it's something that's b built for success, but I'm just saying if you do have a team that can score a lot of runs, a team that can mash, a team adding Trey Turner, who should be hitting second, just saying. Just throwing that out there. And trust me, I think we're going to get a lot of phone calls today over what we just saw the last couple of days, and I'm sure that's going to pop up at some point. 
I think it was a good move. I think it was a strong move. You have multiple holes you have to fill if you're Dave Dombrowski looking at this offseason plan. They attacked all of them within seconds of winter meetings. You got yourself the middle infielder. You got yourself a starter. And now you can look at what you're going to do in the five. Rob Thompson mentioned that there's a good possibility when you look at some of the young kids that Andrew Painter could make it on opening day, which would be magnificent. It would be fun. I'm sure he wouldn't be throwing a heavy, 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 heavy monster of innings, but that's when Bailey Falter comes into play. That's when Christopher Sanchez comes into play. They can help eat some of those innings too. But you did that. And then, of course, you picked up some bullpen help in Strom. Strom's a bit of a wild card. I'm not telling you this is a slam dunk, but I know you had to fill the hole of losing Brad Hand. You lose Brad Hand, you need a lefty, you get a lefty. Bullpen pieces are weird. You could pick up a guy with a fantastic history like David Robertson. He comes here and he falls apart. He gets injured. He's beat up. He doesn't look the same. We eventually saw David Robertson part two, which was better. Still had some uglier moments and whatnot, but still had some very, very strong ones too. Way different presence. But we brought in David Robertson and thought that that was a no miss. It was a miss. You just don't know. Left-handed can maybe use some oomph and bring some heat. We'll see how it goes. It needed a body, though. You needed someone. I don't know. I'm not going to pretend just because it's a guy, it's automatically awesome. Knable got injured. Familia is another name that was a bit of a mess. I'm not telling you he's great, he's bad, he's awful. I I know they needed this. They needed a left-handed reliever. They got one. Had some ups and downs throughout his career. Welcome to a bullpen piece. Welcome to being a reliever in Major League Baseball. I'm excited to see what he becomes, though. I'm excited to see if there's something there. You're comfortable with Jose Alvarado. You're comfortable with... Sir Anthony Dominguez. You know what's going to be happening towards that back end. So now it's filling in more of sixth inning, seventh inning, those level of guys. Can't wait to see what Dave does next for that. We were kind of throwing it around the best show ever today. Can Bailey Falter be a Ranger Suarez guy? And what I mean by that is you kind of throw around relief action for him, Starting action for him. The guy seems to always want the ball. It doesn't matter where he's at. I just want to pitch. But would that be hurting him if you need him for a starter to help kind of the Andrew Painter role and if you just want to get some guys some extra days, push them back? Because I'm going to be honest, I do have a bit of a fear of what's happening with Nola and Wheeler just based off of them really going through a lot. Wear and tear on their body. <laughs> 